Hey, everybody, we're back. All right, everyone. Um, hope you had a really good day yesterday. Yesterday was the Dr. Martin Luther King um, holiday, which is uh, a national, I mean, national holiday um, nationwide. And, uh, you know, Phoenix was no different. You, I'm so glad that we were able to capture what we could from the march and the festival here in downtown Phoenix. There so many amazing people that were there and such a great group of people that really showed their love for the community and for each other. And everybody came out, politicians, citizens, um, future politicians, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of kids and organizations. I mean, there were a lot of fraternities and, and sororities that had come out to march with uh, even the mayor and it was all headed up by uh, you know Warren Stewart Jr. but uh, we got some interviews from people who pretty much gave all their input so um, if you want to uh, check it out and let us know what you think at the end uh, by uh, emailing us later hey what's up this is Zod from the Zod Andrea podcast and as you can see we are over here in Phoenix Arizona enjoying ourselves on the MLK Day celebration. You got music in the back, you got people over here partying, you got vendors and all kinds of people in celebration of Dr. King coming together. Races, all kinds of religions. So what we here at Zod and Dre are gonna do is we're gonna ask people what they think about the day and some of their opinions on some of the social changes that have been going on and what they uh, are pretty much gonna wind up doing about it. So um, come with us on this venture and uh, let's see what people have to say. Paris, uh, seeing everything here in the MLK Day, tell me what your thoughts are. I think it's beautiful actually. We walked up and they're playing backyard party and it was it's beautiful to see every black face that I've seen so far. And what do you think is the message that Dr. King would have today? Especially, you know, people like to pull the I have a dream stuff when we know that he is a lot more radical than that. What do you think that he would think at this point? togetherness and also about the administration well I think he would be happy to see Phoenix particularly come together um, our black community is very spread out um, so I think he would be happy to see us all here I mean, for the most part there's more there's more of us coming um, but I also think the the administration he'd have to call bullshit on um, and he, he was a very radicalized man. Um, you know, I have his mugshot hanging in my room. You know, he, he, knew, he knew what needed to happen in order to make that peace that one day we will eventually have, because we're still working on it. We're still working on it. And it takes a whole bunch of different groups, especially here in Phoenix, uh, to work on that. Do you want to see a lot more cohesiveness between a whole bunch of other black groups and Latino groups in order to make that dream come true? Oh yeah, for sure. Here in Phoenix, we have um, a crazy division between the black and brown um, political justice systems, even though it's the same fight. You know, there are uh, black political organizations here, for example, that are working within the brown community. You know, that's where I do most of my organizing is within the black and brown community. Um, Afro-Latinx folks still suffer the same kind of injustices that um, undocumented folks do. We are working really hard currently with this new legislative, legislative session starting um, to bridge that gap because it's the same fight, it's just in a different language. And what are some of those fights? I mean, can you name some specific? Yeah, so right now we're working on uh, the Freedom Phoenix uh, Coalition, which is um, my C4 organization with another C with um, a lot of other C4s, actually. Uh, it's a coalition. It's, I don't really like that word. So we're, we're working on it. But it's a coalition of a lot of different um, ethnic organizations, and we're going to be taking on the PPD head on. All right, all right. So PPD, you better watch out. Um, and lastly, what do you think people should be getting out of today when they leave here? Oh, man. I think more than anything, there should be a lot of, of contact information exchanged. I think a day, an afternoon, a beautiful sunny day in the park, and you walk away with less than 10 phone numbers in your pocket, you've done it all wrong. I think today should be a day of... of 
community like community building you know right now what what this looks like to me is community building and if I don't leave this place with any less than 10 phone numbers I'm gonna be real upset with myself you know because I want to be able to call black folks and say hey I'm having a barbecue hey I'm doing this I'm doing that whatever the case may be and I want to see you I want to see you there I'm having an event you know come to it um, and my organizations were doing a lot more things like this in the black community so hopefully there will be information exchange there'll be Facebook messages happening something to like build that community a little stronger and lastly could you name um, how we can get in contact with the organizations yeah so I am the executive director for the Arizona black voter initiative um, we are on Facebook at AZBVI um, I'm also the co-director for, one of the co-directors for Black Lives Matter Phoenix Metro. We yell power to the people, the mosque to the steeple, melanin royalty fighting for what's equal, stay woke. Hands up! Hands up! We shout love one another, my sister, my brother, blessings to the two fathers and new mothers, stay woke. Stay woke. Hey. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm Millie Bucci. Hey, Millie. Uh, I want to know, what does this day, Martin Luther King Day, mean to you? It's a day of service, a day of gratitude, and a day of education. And that's why I'm here. And I brought my five-year-old and my three-year-old along so that they could learn, they could experience. We did the march. Um, we purposely did it at the very back and walked the whole way um, so that my kids know what it's like to be at the back and that they always take a role of service um, and not try to you know jump to the front and <laughs> you know be with their friends like really understand how hard it was for all those heroes that gave up so much and did so much so that we could be a little bit closer to true freedom equality and liberation in this country now, as you can see, there's a lot of people who um, have come together for this day. And in Arizona, which is so much a red state, and which was also, I think, um, either the last or next to last state next to New Hampshire to um, actually honor this as a king holiday, um, is it, you know, tell me what it feels like to see all of these people of uh, different backgrounds together as one celebrating this day together. It's wonderful. It's wonderful to, to be here <laughs> and to see all the different type and to see all the different types of folks. And I, I think that when politicians show up to this, it needs to be because they've, you know, stood with Black Lives Matter before, they've stood with Puente, they've stood with the Dreamers, they've stood with Lucha. Like showing up to get your photo taken is not what this is about. And that's not what I want my kids to take away from this. This is all about service to community, humbling yourself, um, and, and being a good human, especially for my white kids, it's really important for them to learn to be humble and to be servants and to follow the people of color that are at the forefront of these movements because like Linda Sansor said, if you're in a movement and it's not being led by a woman of color, you're in the wrong movement. You need to get the <laughs> Now you can see uh, everybody here is also having a good time. They're all enjoying each other's company. Do you think that in this climate of Trump and you know so much racial um, heat that's been going on that the White House is representing what this day is supposed to be about? No, he's a disgrace. I mean, Congressman John Lewis got on the TV and said that this president is so awful it made him cry. I mean, I get goosebumps thinking about that. Like, I want to cry that this great hero had his freaking head smashed open, right? So that he could vote, so that we could be a little bit closer to that ideal that America is supposed to be about, and it never has. I'm not trying to say it has, but that we're supposed to get to. It, you know, when John Lewis, who's a freaking saint, says that about you, you need to just you need to just go away forever and then take like the next three generations along with you right because they're just absolute trash the whole group of them they need to go they need to go for sure and what would be the lesson learned that people should know when they come out of this entire environment today what should they know oh that is not that is not for me to say that is for um, 
you know, the, the thought leaders, the intellectual leaders, um, people of color that are, are leading those movements. I would point everybody to um, Black Lives Matter, Black Phoenix Institute, uh, East Valley NAACP, Lucha, Puente, Mi Familia. Um, you need to read what they're saying about today because what I have to say about today doesn't matter, right? I mean, we have to be here to be servants and to follow them. Hi, what are your names? Hi, I'm Nicolette Del Palacio. Claudia Faudoa. L Lucy Olaez. And what's the organization you're with? Um, we're with Mi Familia Vota. All right. Now, together, you guys are Mi Familia Vota. Tell me what you're here at Martin Luther King Day for. Sure. Um, all three of us are organizers for the organization. Um, we're here specifically to, um, I guess, kind of like honor Martin Luther King's um, vision and his um, his enduring like symbol of using the power of the people to um, enact real change. And here we're um, kind of just talking to people, um, collecting stories. We're doing voter registration. We're trying to get make sure people are ready to go for November sixth. Because um, there's a lot of our values and a lot of our um, a lot of a lot at stake for our community come in November. And what are your roles for Mafilia Vota? Uh, we do voter registrations. Um, we're we're going to be uh, uh, doing canvassing in a few weeks. We're going to start knocking doors, um, just uh, getting everyone involved on registering and not only registering them but getting out to vote that's what we're going to be doing now what do you think dr king would say about the climate today in the trump administration um, from your perspective as latinas um <laughs> i'm pretty sure he'd have a lot to say um i think he'd be disappointed just like every single one of us is and um i think we're here because we we kind of feel like We've taken steps backwards. Um, Dr. King and the movement that he spearheaded was definitely a step forward for everybody, especially people of color. Um, and the the election in 2016 kind of felt like we took a million steps backwards. And um, I think Dr. King would be both disappointed in that, but he would also be um, heartened by the fact that that negativity inspired so many people to get together, inspired like thousands, hundreds of thousands of new voters here in the state, and inspired people to actually go out and be activists and go to marches. I, the Women's March, um, the day after uh, Trump's inauguration, was probably the, was the most people I've ever seen at the Capitol, ever. And I've been to plenty of those little, um, little get-togethers, and yeah, that thing was, it was, it was insane, and I think he'd be proud of us. Uh, what should, so what should people get out of today? Um, I think people should be able to look around and see that they're not alone. Um, I think it can be kind of hard sometimes to be watching the news or listening to the radio and you, you feel like there's all these forces that are acting against you as a progressive, as a person of color, um, as a member of the LGBT community. And um, it's powerful to be around a bunch of people who support you and to see that represented in bodies, right? And being able to talk to people and being able to, you know, um, tell your story to them, get their story and understand that you're not alone. And that, you know, just as badly as you feel, the reason why you came is why they came to. And to turn that into voting and turn that into seats won and, you know, stuff taken back because there's, there's been a lot of attacks on our community. So. Yeah, I think that's it's important to take that from this. Awesome. And lastly, how can people get in touch with Fami Mi Familia Vota? Yeah, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, uh, MiFamiliaVota.org, um, Facebook at MiFamiliaVota Arizona, uh, same thing, Twitter, MiFamiliaVota Arizona. Um, people can come down to our office, we're at uh, 1710. Yeah, we're at 1710 Indian School Road, um, Suite 100. We're the nicest people ever. Come down, get registered to vote, um, get some ideas on how to engage your community. Because Our phone number is 602-263-2030. Um, we're nice, we're friendly. Come down um, and look for us at these sort of events. We're always trying to um, have a presence here to kind of like get as many people engaged in what we do as possible. So yeah, come say hi if you see us at different events too.